Our first segment of today's episode boasts a true entertainment powerhouse in the studio, a man whose infectious spirit has lit up stages from Vegas to Virginia. You've read about him in our Jan Feb issue, and now we get to dive even deeper into the life and journey of the vibrant T Fox, CEO of Fox City Music Media and entertainment ambassador at Rosie's Gaming Emporium. We're talking all about the music, milestones, and the magic that makes T Fox a true icon. Without further ado, let's welcome the man himself to the show. T Fox, thank you so much for being on From Print to Podcast oh, today. What a wonderful, wonderful day it is, Liz, <laughs> just to be with you today and know that uh, you like foxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on the Tell same page for sure. Already. But uh, it's been just such a pleasure being here today and having an opportunity to uh, answer some questions that you have and uh, share the love and the joy and the spirit that God has given us to see what we can do to uh, make people happy. Maybe I can get somebody some kind of direction on what they might want to do with life. And, I think that's great. Well, we've had a bunch know, of laughs already, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we sure have. Uh, so, and thank you again for being part of our Jan Feb issue. Thank it was you. so cool to learn somebody wow. of your stature and background is right here in our little city of Roanoke and all the things that you're doing, which we're going to talk wow, about yeah. wanted to give you know without giving too much away of the article because we want to send people there to read it as well okay. but talking about a really quick it, we've talked about how hard it is to sum up your amazing like the first half of your life is already something out of like a movie um <laughs> but so your mother and your aunt had an enormous yes. impact on your yes. life thanks to legendary performances which i want yes. to hear more about yes. and i'm let's hear more about your experience growing up surrounded by talent well you know What's been really, really amazing is is that I was I grew up with a with a musical family. Mm-hmm. I mean, my uncle, um, singer, entertainer, um, also um, a military man, and he uh, his name was Rusty. That was his nickname, and we his nickname was Rusty Nails. <laughs> well, that's an easy. <laughs> that was his entertain. Yeah, <laughs> and then my aunt Marietta Bayless. She is uh, basically she was. Uh, the backbone of uh, the music and when it came to me learning how to play the piano. Um, I used to be at her house because she always had a piano there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, mom bought a piano. And then we would all meet up in the family every Friday and Saturday nights. We would all meet up in the living room. And it'd be my uncle, my brothers, my you know aunt, my mom. We would all just sing songs all night long. That's what kept us that, it was almost like food for the soul. Sure. When we're all like. together and we can sing songs like, you know, um, songs like, well, we, we did like um, uh, gospel songs, R&B songs like, <clears throat> I guess you say what can make me feel this way, my girl. That was The Temptations. And I've been blessed because my aunt, Marietta Bayless, um, and um, my other auntie, her name is Sylvia Moy, uh, was the first female writer of Motown. So I did not know when, as a kid that, you know, here comes, you know, Stevie Wonder, David Ruffin, here comes Eddie Kendricks, here comes, you know, uh, Diana Ross, here comes these people coming over to Sylvia's house. And I'm a kid not knowing that these are like great that's stars your, that's here. That's your everyday Friday. This like, is my everyday Friday and Saturday oh was to be around these great <laughs> Motown entertainers, yeah. which is wow. inspired me so much that my next show, March 1st, I'm calling the show, uh, and I want you there. It's going to be called The Evolution of Motown and the Classic Hits of Yesteryear. So I'm going to do the evolution, meaning Michael Jackson, Temptations, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, the Isley Brothers, Lionel Richie. I sing 47 songs a night, one man show, three and a half hour, one man show wow. straight. So back to the growing up, you know, I knew that I was destined to do something, but I never knew what it was. But music is what just basically took me into another level where I did not know that I was going to wind up, you know, getting keys to the days and honors and wind up in Vegas and these things. Yeah, your I was resume in Detroit. is crazy. So he, uh, T-Fox <laughs> comes in and he hands me this binder that's full of his accomplishments, which is just this incredible portfolio of work that's... I don't even know how to explain like the amazing things that you've done for every city that you've lived in. It really it excites me to see what you're going to do for Roanoke. You know, you, you've barely been here. I'm going to run for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I hear that's coming up this year. So I was just getting to a point in my life where I was trying to figure out, okay, I've done Vegas. And my call came and Mr. Gomes, the son of Dennis Gomes, had passed away. And Aaron, he's like a, he's like a little brother to me. And I've been knowing him forever. 
he he wound up becoming the vice president um, uh, of the uh, resorts hotel. Uh, young guy, you know, and when he passed away, uh, when when Mr. Gomes passed away, his father he took over, and my call was, "Hey, T. Fox," um, I said, "Aaron, how you doing during COVID? What are you doing?" You know, we opened up. I bought a Kmart in Richmond, and uh, we uh, we opened up a gaming emporium. I'm like, "What is a gaming emporium?" <laughs> you know, it's like a casino, but you know, and we're gonna call it Rosie's. How would you like to come out and be ambassador of entertainment? He says, I'm building a, a, a place in, um, in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, and it's going to have a stage, Fox. I built you kind of like a stage, so you'll have a stage, and you'll just enjoy it. And I'm like, okay, here's my chance to try something new. I did 20 years Vegas, you know, so I wanted to try something new. And it was time to get out the desert, Okay. That sounds, you know, biblical, doesn't it? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way, but now that you said it. You know, in the desert, 20 years, you know, and it was just time to get out. I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So growing up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I'm, I am I love the trees and the birds. And I, I was going to say, is, mountains are a big, big change from... A fox belongs in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> so what wound up happening was I, uh, I decided... Let me talk to my wife and see what she thinks. And she said, let's go for it. What are we going to do here? So after I wound up from Malibu, we got the call. And I said, let's try Virginia. Never been here. Now, my, my little brother, Rashawn, lived in um, Norfolk. But he had moved from Norfolk to Vegas to be with me. <laughs> you guys just... <laughs> so I over. wound up going <laughs> coming down here. So he's there and I'm here now, you know. And... Um, my oldest brother, Sidney, um, unfortunately, I lost him um, uh, in a car accident. Uh, he had, he had uh, almost 10 kids, you know, and we were able to uh, help raise three of the kids mm -hmm. and me and my wife. And um, they went on about their thing. All the kids are doing great. Everybody's doing great. We almost got like 25 nieces and nephews. So it's like, a whole lot more singers <laughs> for the family choir. Oh, <laughs> my got, gosh. I got Jackson 5 times 10 <laughs> times 20 times 30. But I think what was really important was to try something new. Um, when something touches your soul to try, try it. And so I said, well, what do we got to lose right now? I can go there. I can, I can see what this is like here. And then all of a sudden, we came during the, the spring. And I haven't seen, you know, uh, uh, hummingbirds and stuff like that in years, you know. So the forest and... I'm, I love taking walks in forest. So we found a place. We fell in love with the place. And it reminded us of Michigan. My wife and I graduated from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I decided, you know, to just enjoy doing what I do. And I met like Joe Jackson and, and Prince. And these guys would come through, through Vegas. And I think really what made me excited about Vegas was I wanted to meet Wayne Newton for some reason. I, well, I'm so glad that yeah. you hit on this okay. because the Roanoke connection yeah. is just wonderfully full circle. Yes. And I hear that he even has a copy of the Jan Feb yes, issue. Yes, he does. Because <laughs> <laughs> when somebody told me that, I was like, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to have to back up and repeat that sentence for me. Like Wayne Newton has a copy of the Roanoke. That is one of the coolest things I've heard all year. Because <laughs> he's from here. Right. And I didn't know I, I never I didn't know in a million years this man was from here. Now okay. this is this is the crazy part. My show is in, in at the Tropicana upstairs and Wayne's was downstairs. I come down to see his show. And then when I was done, before my show started, because I started later than Wayne, Wayne would come up and see my show. He go, hey, T Fox, how you doing? You know, he sounds like Catherine Hepburn a little bit, but he'd say <laughs> T Fox is one of the greatest entertainers, and I'm gonna come downstairs, and he would tell all of his audience to go upstairs and see me. I love that he was supporting his fellow he, artists. Oh, he supported me to the point where he gave me his dressing room, the key to his dressing room, because I got kicked out of my dressing room for chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know follow that's up a long that old question. story, <laughs> but. The, <laughs> Yeah, it was just a game that they had, and, and uh, they had nowhere to put the chickens. <laughs> and uh, Wayne heard about it and said, T Fox, uh, what are you doing? I was changing in my, in, you know, in my, uh, in my car one night, and he says, "Here's the keys to my dressing room. 
you can have my dressing room. I'm not there during that time. And he gave me the keys to the dressing room. And since then, he became Uncle Wayne to me. I love that. That's how that happened. And we've been friends ever since. And then when I did Resorts Hotel in Atlantic City, um, my show was called The House Party, which I do now, but it's a smaller version because mm-hmm. I had a 60-foot stage. I turned the whole stage into a living room. And literally, that's why I call it The House Party. <laughs> And it means something to me. It was kind of like a personal thing to come up with the word house party because, like I told you, F-A-I-T-H, father always in the house. So I kind of ran like a musical ministry kind of thing. You can't lose when you sing Temptations, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson. Not unlike your Friday family gatherings either at home. Uh -uh. That's lovely. You know? So that's what it was. It was, that's that's, that's deep that you said that because... (laughs) It was kind of like it made me feel comfortable Mm -hmm. to make my stage look like a living room. And then I had a big old screen, so I was able to put the tributes to Michael Jackson on the screen while I sing his songs. And um, it was called The House Party, and it was a 1,500-seater, two shows a night, three nights a week, sold-out shows. That's a lot. That's a lot. But sold out, 1,500, I'm like... This many people really like me, you know, that they're coming back and they're coming back. I've been here now for a year. And in one year, I have more friends here and more fans here than I ever had in Vegas. Ugh, that's the perfect way to describe Roanoke, honestly. I'm biased, big fan. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that everyone talks about the community and how welcoming and it's Well, it's a Bible Belt community. Inclusive it is, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a community where people are real. Mm-hmm. You know, it's nothing. There's, there's no big heads here. Everybody's living in the country. Yeah. We don't have quite the glitz and spotlight of Vegas, but, you know. That's why Vegas came to Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so when you're in Roanoke, you and your wife and that sweet little dog that I just saw around the corner. Spirit. <laughs> My baby. What do you guys do when you're hanging around, when you're not performing? What do you what do you spend your time? You know, literally being there, um, literally almost ten hours a night. You know, um, four nights out of the week. I'm there Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. Mm-hmm. Um, since this book came out, I must have signed like twenty five books in the last <laughs> week. People are like, "T Fox, would you sign this?" Oh my I god, love the it. article's <laughs> wonderful, and oh my god, you made it in the Ron Oaker. And well, oh gosh, you know. well, you be sure to thank them for supporting local journalism. So. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so I told them who did it and how it happened. And well, thank you. You know, and and I love it, and and, and it's it's an honor to be in this magazine because I never really knew what it was until I started seeing some of. I think the first one I saw was this one here with the lady that's holding the food. And yes, I, for uh, Gina's Food with yeah. Flavor, mm-hmm, November, and, December. And I was like, I want to do that. I said, I want to go over there and eat that food. <laughs> yeah. you know? The fun part was is that I had, you know, I thought I was going to get this little square. And I turned this page and it said, from Vegas to Virginia. And that is like the ultimate because literally it was perfect, V&V. Mm-hmm. When Laura Wade came to me, we were working on this piece and she okay. says, we sat down and talked for two hours. There's no way. There's what? no way I'm going to write all of this in 300 words. There's just, it's impossible. And so we looked at it, made some room, and then it turned out to be this big, beautiful piece. Because once you, again, started listing your resume and the the awards and the keys to the city, not once but twice, you know, like, it was unbelievable. Stamps we couldn't, we couldn't skip out on such a story. <laughs> right. We haven't even talked about the stamp yet, actually. So I do want to, yeah, I want to talk about the stamp because okay. this is really important. It's a February episode. Yes. Kiana um, Price Marshall wrote a fantastic story on celebrating black culture in Roanoke. Wow. So as far as for Black History Month, yeah. I really want to talk about this stamp yeah. because this is such an incredible story. <sighs> it, uh, Where does it even start? I, I don't even know. I, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's till today it blows my mind. Because literally, you're supposed to be dead when you're on a stamp. Your face is yeah. on a stamp. My face is literally, my father's a well-known artist. Um, he um, He's worked with Marvel Comics. He's done a lot of, uh, he's a scholar. He's, he's a history teacher. He teaches you about black history. He teaches you about Sigourney Truth and Martin Luther King and Frederick Douglass and, and Jean-Baptiste Pointe du Sable. And who is this man? Well, it turns out that my father's French-Canadian Indian. Um, Turns out that um, uh, there's there's a link to my family to their family. And my father said, you have hazel eyes and curly hair. You look just like Jean-Baptiste. And I said, well, they didn't have cameras back then. (laughs) That's 1700s. 
He says, I know, but they had likenesses that were done. Mm-hmm. So since my father was an illustrator and he was well, uh, his paintings are unbelievable, he decided um, to use my face for uh, submitting to the Black Heritage Stamps, uh, uh, the, um, they call them Postal Workers Union. And uh, he drew the picture and uh, they took a look at his work and they said, this is perfect. This is Jean-Baptiste. And then he said, well, we're going to go on and uh, see what we can do. And the next thing you know, I just looked up one day and my father said, son, you know, and, and to tell you the truth, I had just met my father for the first time of my life when I was 25. My father and my mom separated when I was two. Um, but he kept an eye on me all the time. He'd go, he'd go, he'd come and, you know, he'd see my shows and he'd, you know. Hmm. So when we came together, he said, um, you know, son. I want you to go pick up the twenty-two cent stamp at the, you know, at the uh, uh, post office. There's no warning or anything. It's well, just he knew that I collect Black Heritage stamps. I got a big collection of them, and so oh I went to the post office. I looked up on the wall for the issue of the Black Heritage stamp, nineteen eighty-two, and I said, "That's my face. That is my face on this stamp, Dad. What's going on, man?" You, is that what's going on? He said, congratulations, son. I, I utilized your face. They they liked it, and they submitted it to the government. became a 22-cent stamp because they didn't know how Jean-Baptiste looked, and you look just like him. And they said, so they loved it so much, and they loved my face to use like that, that it went from that to a statue. It's just another saga of my life, which I'm doing. I'm putting together a movie. It's called um, From Hallway to Headliner. And the, all these things that has happened in my life, I can't explain uh, why God chooses certain people to do certain things uh, and things happen. I mean, I, I have what, you, what they call the American Liberty Sword, which is which is uh, uh, I'm a goodwill ambassador to the armed forces. Uh, there's only three in the world, and I'm the first uh, black man that's ever received this award. Um, and then there was two more left, and one of them is supposed to go to Wayne Newton. So I might be the one that's going to deliver that this year to Wayne Newton. Oh, my gosh. So this is going to be something. But it's a sterling silver 22 karat gold pewter and diamond sword. And I think you saw a little of it. I on did. The, <laughs> but the fact that you might get to be able to share that with your good friend and family member, essentially, Uncle Wayne. Like, Uncle Wayne, man. What an amazing, like, again. I can the- hear him now. <laughs> T-Fox, let's not do Donkey Shane until I get the sword. <laughs> just, the, just the full circle of that is so wonderful. You can't write that. Like, you can't. I can't there's write there's this. no writer that can predict that. I, even today, being where I'm at, you know, it's been ups and downs and whatever what I'm doing, but I think it's the people who keep me going here. Because I could have go back to Vegas. I can go. I can go. I can do what we want to do. But we fell in love with this place to the point where we found peace here. And since I have peace here, um, and I love people, and I'm putting out my concerts. And every time I do a concert, I'm seeing over 500 people. The place is packed. And these people love seeing my show, and I'm a one-man show running a track show. Well, and so you had sent me, when we were preparing for our interview, he sends me a clip of, of the crowd singing with you, Sweet Caroline. And it was at Christmas right around that time, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. And it, I couldn't believe, like, you couldn't fit another person in that space. Like, you could you're going to have the not. fire marshal get in there. I mean, this is <laughs> my fifth, sixth, or seventh show. All of my shows have been like right. that. Right. And the fact that you're bringing this crowd, this this community black into white Vinton. young old rich poor everybody right. the way the world's supposed to be because i mean rosie's right. is fun it certainly is. but it you're sort of bringing place. community together into one space to really enjoy a moment together when you're not you know out doing different things in the casino people told me they wouldn't have stepped foot in rosie's if it wasn't for going there to see entertainment and our, we have the best entertainment right now mm-hmm. ever i mean we're like number two in you know in in, in our uh, community number two or three and um, 
our entertainment is every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. We just started our Thursdays. Mm -hmm. But Friday and Saturday nights, we got some of the greatest groups here. Like um, we had bands from The Works to Minute Fences to, you know, Gerald Stout. There's a lot of great entertainers here. And I think that's another reason it kept me here is, is that I'm meeting so many great musicians and everybody's pretty much my friends. I mean, I literally became family to every band that's here because I know how I want to be treated, and I would like to treat people the same way. You know, now my job is to take care of them when they get there, make sure they get their foods, you know, hype them up before they get on the stage. I MC the night. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes, you know, the works or whatever. And sometimes they invite me to come up and sing a song with them. So I'll do a song with them, and next thing you know, and everybody wants me to sing Purple Rain, though. <laughs> You look like Prince and Morris Day. Can you do Purple Rain? All right. So do not go to Roses and request okay, Purple Rain. Just, yeah, he yeah. has this whole <laughs> backlog of music to his advantage. Request something else. Purple Rain, Purple Rain, Purple Rain. So I just did it this past week with this other group. I'll send it to you. It's hysterical. But, it, but, but it's like, you know, and, and it's funny. I had a purple shirt on. So I'm like, I never meant to cause you any trouble. I never meant to cause. You know, everybody goes, you kind of look like Prince and you kind of look like Michael. And I'm like, well, yeah. I, I mean, uh, I think that it's really great that you got people who um, enjoy Prince. I didn't know what people listen to out here. Oh, people love Prince around here. That I is have not no, a Lionel question. Richie, Prince, Motown. Yeah. So. We have a very uh, we have a diverse array of musicians that come through. The interest <laughs> between, you know, Berglin and Jefferson and Dr. Pepper Park and all these places we've got. Wow. And then, of course, you've got Rosie's who's supporting local artists as well, which is also really important because we have a lot of great talent. It really in the area. is. I mean, we're working with good people. I mean, you know, um, working with JD, who mm -hmm. works with um, the Big Lick, mm -hmm. and uh, he does pretty much the booking for the uh, place. I scouted for a while finding bands. And, um, you know, we got a, a, a great general manager. His name is Todd Lear. He's, he's like one of the greatest uh, people that you would want to work with, you know. Um, he's a people person, you know. Um, got a lot of fun people who work there that we try to um, entertain people by just letting them come in, let them feel good. We got good food. We got good entertainment. People can play the slides. They can watch the show. Free entertainment mm -hmm. on top of it. So you can come and really just get away. And people like going there because it's safe and because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And and this is where people can mingle. And this is where a lot of the lonely people go so they can have friends. A lot of seniors go there, mm -hmm. you know, who probably lost their wives or husbands or whatever and have nowhere to go and bored. And they know they can come there and feel safe, feel like they're at home. And that's my job is to, to make them feel at home. You know, hug them. Hey, how you doing? Tell me what's going on. And I, I'm kind of like a, I'm like a counselor there too. I'm, I'm really <laughs> sensing a big theme in your life as far as faith and father in the house. I mean, truthfully. So I mean, uh, once again, coming full circle. I'm seeing it work, and so maybe I'm here. You know, for that reason, I don't know. I'm here for a reason because I'm still here. So you know, my wife, um, she's enjoying it. Um, I'm with my, my, my baby spirit. Spirit's enjoying it. Yeah, he's all enjoying it. Puppy yeah, friendly he's, activities yeah, around he's, here. He's a military dog, so he, <laughs> he's a he's a Dotsie Poo and he's like, you know, everybody knows that dogs are unconditional love. And, you know, he really has pulled through with us through the COVIDs and the this and the that's and the traveling in the planes and this and that and he's still with us as a blessing. You know, he's fourteen now, you know. And um so I think what's really important right now is to see what's next. And I know what's next, and that's March 1st. Right. It's going to be my next show. And I am going to do some very special things. Heck, I might even sing Phantom of the Opera's Music of the Night. <laughs> Night time shine, you know. I don't Not know. purple rain. See, you're know. so you have such an so, array. Oh, oh my gosh, your knowledge is like encyclopedia. I it's hope amazing. you can make it, Liz. It's going to be a good gonna, time. It's going to be a good time. One thing that you learn um, with this house party is you throw your cares away when you're in there. And when the show starts, your mind just goes into, I just want to see somebody entertain, perform, and I want to have a good time and have my little drink and see my friends and talk. And, and, and it just grew, it grow, it grew into this, this, this house party. So when everybody knows that I'm getting ready to do a house party, it just, people come, they're, they're, they're flocking in. Like I stood on stage and said, where did all these people come from? <laughs> 
So they are listening to you. Mm -hmm. They are watching you. I, I get on my social media pages, which I have, you know, uh, uh, T Fox TV 2024. That's my YouTube channel. So if you want to go to there, go to YouTube channel. And I have, um, uh, I'm Tyrone Fox on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We'll link it all up on your thanks on to the my page. Niece, yep. Yeah, thanks to my nieces and nephews, though. I, I <laughs> you, wouldn't have known You have plenty of, of family to help I'm you out a, there. That's good. That's I'm awesome. A Facebook I love I that you've got the family there to be like, no, we need to fix this for you. Yeah. We'll, we'll make it exactly what you need to Get on that. Yeah, I love know? it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, I thank you so much again for being in our Jan Feb issue. This is like the smallest piece of your story that like we're oh, running out of time. Small, yeah. And I just can't wait for more people to learn more about you. You've been here for a year, but I hope that you stick around because I know we're all excited to learn more about you. Liz, it's it's, it's the story continues. Um, I'm, I'm videotaping uh, everything that I do. That's right. Here. I hear there's a document. Or a, um, I'm sorry, a biography coming and then biography. your documentary. Yep. It's got um, from hallway to headliner. Yeah. You know, it's about my life and the reason why I haven't finished is I'm still living. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good reason, though. That's that's a good one. Well, so again, we've, we've kind of listed where your latest shows and check you out online. We'll list those things online on our okay. website beneath our segment together. Okay. But again, uh, T Fox, thank you so much for Girl, coming in today. Listen, let me tell you something. And to all the audience out there, first of all, Thank you so much for listening to Liz's podcast. It's a it's a pleasure being here. I feel warm here. It's like home. She's like my sister. <laughs> and and what's really cool is 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 that I had an opportunity to share who I am to Virginia and to Vinton and to Roanoke. So Vegas is now met Virginia, and this is our this is official. We are here. Yep. We have now just cracked the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Don't go to Vegas. Stay here. Vegas came hey, to you. Hey, Vegas is here. You know, like Elvis says, thank you very much. I'll come on down here, baby. But, wow. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming. Let me be here and, and share with you my life. And when you want to do it again, you just let me know. Call me anytime. And Absolutely. We can we gotta. do part two. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say it any better than Elvis. So obviously, uh, listeners, there's so much more to come. You can learn more about T Fox's Vegas to Virginia adventures, his new journeys, what's coming up and more. Plus, of course, where to catch his shows at Rosie's Gaming Emporium over in Vinton. So be sure to learn more in our latest issue on newsstands now, and you can always head over to the to read more.